Good morning everybody. In previous class, we shall discuss today about the importance of stomata and how do organisms obtain their nutrition or nutrition in amoeba. Okay dear students, today we shall discuss today about the nutrition in human beings. So, nutrition in human beings takes place in the digestive system. So, it consisting of elementary canal and glands which produce enzymes which breaks down food into smaller molecules. So, we have to eat various types of food which has to pass through the same digestive tract. Naturally, the food has to be processed to generate the particles which are small and the same texture. This is achieved by the crushing the food with our teeth. So here, the main organs of the digestive systems are mouth, esophagus, stomach, small intestine, large intestine and anus are the main organs of the digestive system. The main glands are salivary glands, gastric glands, liver, pancreas and intestinal glands are the main glands of the digestive system. So let us see one by one. So observe the figure. So observe the figure. And then, so in the mouth, the food is broken down into smaller particles by the teeth and mixed with saliva from the salivary glands. Saliva contains the enzymes salivary amylase which convert starch into sugar. Then the food passes through the esophagus into the stomach. So here the food is first broken into the smaller particles with the help of the teeth. And these food mixed with the saliva from the salivary glands. So saliva contains the enzymes salivary amylase. So which converts starch into sugar. So then the food passes through the esophagus into the stomach. Here Observe this figure. Here in the mouth, salivary glands are present. Salivary glands, tongue, epiglottis, esophagus, or food pipe, stomach, pancreas, gallbladder, ileum, colon, cecum, appendix, and rectum. So are the digestive system of digestive organs of the human being. So here in the stomach. So in the stomach, the gastric glands produce gastric juice, so which contains the enzyme which pepsin, hydrochloric acid and mucus. Pepsin breaks down proteins, hydrochloric acid. So this hydrochloric acid makes the medium acidic and helps in the action of pepsin. So, mucus protects the walls of the stomach from the action of the acid. Then, the food passes into the small intestine. So, once again I repeat it. In the stomach, so which glands, which glands is present? Gastric glands are present. So, these gastric glands will produce which juice? Gastric juice. So, these gastric juice contains which enzymes? Pepsin, hydrochloric acid and mucus are uh, contains. Here, pepsin breaks down the proteins, hydrochloric acid and makes the medium acidic and help in the action of pepsin enzymes. And then, mucus protects the walls of the stomach from the action of the acid. Then, uh, and the last one is the food passes into the small intestine. So in the up, and then in the upper part of the small intestine, it is called it as an duodenum. So observe here. 
duodenum. So here the duodenum is present into the upper part. So this uh, duodenum it can be uh, helps to the food is mixed with boil from liver and pancreatic juice from the pancreas. The food is mixed with boil from liver and pancreatic juice from the pancreas. Here boil breaks down fats into smaller globules. Pancreatic juice contains the enzymes trypsin and lipase. Which enzymes are contained in the pancreatic juice? Pancreatic juice contains the enzymes trypsin and lipase. So here Trypsin breaks down proteins and lipase break down fats. Trypsin breaks down proteins and lipase break, break down fats. And then small intestine. In the small intestine, the glands, the walls of the small intestine produces the intestinal juice. So, which juice produces the walls of the intestine? Here, the, in the intest small intestine, the glands, the walls of the small intestine produces the intestinal juice. So, the enzymes of the intestinal juice converts carbohydrates into glucose, fats into fatty acids and glycerol and proteins into amino acids. The enzymes of the intestinal juice converts carbohydrates into glucose, fats into fatty acids and glycerol and proteins into amino acids. The walls of the small intestine has several finger-like projections called villi. The walls of the small intestine has several finger-like projections called villi. So these villi having blood vessels. It helps to increase the surface area for the absorption of digested food. So these villi helps to increase the surface area for the absorption of digested food. So this digested food is absorbed by the blood and transported to all the cells in the body. The, where is it absorbed? The digestive food is absorbed by the blood and transported to all cells in the body. Then the undigested food passes into large intestine. Here the food is digested into the small intestine and the undigested food is passed into the large intestine. So next one, in the large intestine, water is absorbed and the waste material is removed through the anus. Here, water is absorbed and the waste material is removed through the anus. And then, respiration. You know that, what do you mean by respiration in your previous classes in the class 8 and class 9? Now, today we shall know about what do you mean by respiration? How respiration will be and takes place? Here, respiration is the process by which food is burnt in all the cells of the body with the help of oxygen to release energy. Here, respiration is the process by which food is burnt in the cells of the body with the help of oxygen to release energy. It takes place in the mitochondria of the cells. It takes place in the mitochondria of the cells. So the energy release during, uh, during respiration is used to make ATP molecules. The energy release during respiration is used to make ATP molecule. Observe this equation ADP plus phosphate. And it's release the ATP. The energy release during respiration is used to make ATP molecules. From ADP molecule and inorganic phosphate. So, absorb this equation clearly. 
from adp molecules here adp means adenosine diphosphate adenosine diphosphate so adenosine diphosphate and in organic in organic phosphates so the energy is released during respiration and it is used to make the atp molecule here atp means adenosine triphosphate here atp means adenosine triphosphate once again i repeat it from adp molecule or adenosine diphosphate and in organic phosphates here the respiration the energy released during respiration is used to make atp molecule or adenosine triphosphate molecule and next one is energy is stored in the cells in the form of atp molecule so how energy is released in the cell energy is stored in the cells in the form of atp molecules when the cells need energy so atp is broken in the presence of water to form adp and energy is released observe this equation here atp is broken down in the presence of water and form adp plus energy and then so types of respiration there are two types of respiration how many types of respiration there are two types of respiration they are aerobic respiration and anaerobic respiration this question is very important in your examination what is uh, respiration how many types of respiration which are they and explain it here there are two main types of respiration they are aerobic and anaerobic respiration are the two types of respiration here aerobic res so let us see one by one aerobic respiration means it takes place in the presence of oxygen it takes place in the presence of oxygen it produces more energy the end products are carbon dioxide water and energy so end products are carbon dioxide water and energy it takes place in most organisms so in aerobic respiration glucose is converted into pyruvate in the cytoplasm in the presence of oxygen and then in the presence of oxygen pyruvate is converted into carbon dioxide water and energy in the mitochondria so observe this equation in cytoplasm in the presence of oxygen glucose is converted into pyruvate so in mitochondria in the presence of oxygen pyruvate is converted into co2 or carbon dioxide h2o or hydro water and energy is released so in aerobic respiration in cytoplasm in the presence of oxygen glucose is converted into pyruvate in mitochondria in the presence of oxygen pyruvate is converted into carbon dioxide water and energy and then anaerobic respiration here anaerobic respiration means it takes place in the absence of oxygen it takes place in the absence of oxygen that's why it is called it as anaerobic respiration so it produces less energy here anaerobic anaerobic respiration produces the less energy the end products are lactic acid or ethanol carbon dioxide and energy it takes place in muscle cells and yeast so observe this equation in anaerobic respiration in muscle cells glucose is converted into pyruvate and in the absence of oxygen pyruvate is converted into lactic acid and energy observe the equation 
in cytoplasm in the presence of oxygen glucose is converted into pyruvate in muscle cells in the absence of oxygen pyruvate is converted into lactic acid plus energy and then in aerobic respiration in yeast glucose is converted into pyruvate and in the absence of oxygen pyruvate is converted into ethanol carbon dioxide and energy so observe this equation so in cytoplasm in the presence of oxygen glucose is converted into pyruvate so in yeast in the absence of oxygen pyruvate is converted into ethanol carbon dioxide and energy so this process is called fermentation so here observe this uh, diagram how the glucose break down here in the cytoplasm in the presence of oxygen glucose is converted into pyruvate so in mitochondria in the presence of oxygen pyruvate is converted into carbon dioxide co2 h2o water plus energy in same as in uh, uh, in anaerobic respiration in the in cytoplasm glucose is converted into pyruvate in muscle cells in the absence of oxygen pyruvate is converted into lactic acid plus energy same as in yeast cell in the absence of oxygen pyruvate is converted into ethanol plus carbon dioxide plus energy so this is the various uh, pathway to break to break down of uh, glucose and then respiration in humans so the main organ of the respiratory system are nostrils nasal cavity pharynx larynx trachea bronchi bronchioles lungs and diaphragm are the main organs of the respiratory system once again i repeat it the main organs of the respiratory systems are nostrils nasal cavity pharynx larynx trachea bronchi bronchioles lungs and diaphragm are the main organs of the respiratory system so observe this equation observe this diagram so now so where nasal cavity oral cavity epiglottis pharynx larynx trachea cartilage left lung oblique fissure diaphragm right bronchus right lung and alveoli and esophagus are there here here where air is enter so air enter through the nostrils air enter through the nostrils the hairs and mucus traps the dust particles present in the air so it's then passes through the pharynx larynx trachea bronchi and enter the lungs so it then passes through the pharynx larynx trachea bronchi and enter the lungs the trachea has rings of cartilage which prevents it from collapsing when there is no air in the trachea so observe this figure so here the trachea is present the trachea has rings of cartilage which prevents it from collapsing when there is no air in the trachea and the bronchi divided into smaller tubes called bronchioles here bronchi are divided into smaller tubes called bronchioles which ends in tiny air sacs called alveoli the alveoli is supplied with blood vessels through the exchange of gases takes place where alveoli is present the alveoli is present at the end of the bronchioles this alveoli is supplied with blood vessels through which exchange of gases will be and takes place the alveoli helps to increase the surface area for the exchange of gases the alveoli helps to increase the surface area for the exchange of gases 
so once again i repeated here air enters through the nostrils the hairs and mucus traps the dust particles inside the nostrils hairs are there hairs are present so these hairs are helps to traps the digest the traps the dust particles are present from the are present in the air and then passes through the pharynx larynx trachea bronchi and into the lungs the trachea has rings of cartilage which prevents it from collapsing when there is no air in the trachea the bronchi divides into smaller tubes called bronchioles figure number 2 which ends in tiny air sacs called alveoli The alveoli is supplied with blood vessels through which exchange of gases takes place. So the alveoli helps to increase the surface area for the exchange of gases. And next one is mechanism of breathing. So when we breathe in air, the muscles of the diaphragm contra- contracts and moves downward and the chest cavity expands and air enters into the lungs. when we breathe in air the muscles of the diaphragm contracts and moves downward and the test chest cavity so the chest cavity expands and air enters into the lungs so when we breathe out air the muscles of the diaphragm relaxes and moves upward and the chest cavity contracts and air goes out of the lungs so observe this figure so how the Um, air will be an expand and it can be an contracts when we breathe out and when we breathe in and then in the next class we shall discuss about the transportation okay dear students today we shall discuss about the discuss about the nutrition in human beings respiration types of respiration aerobic respiration and anaerobic respiration and how the glucose break down the various pathways respiration in humans and mechanism of breathing thank you